Rob Calhoun back with you here on the OVC Media Day preview. Let's talk with Taylor Steele. Here with junior guard Taylor Steele from the Eastern Illinois women's basketball team. Taylor, how would you evaluate last year's performance? I think last year was all about growing, which is something we definitely did as a team. But I don't think it was our – we could have done better last year, and I think that's what we're going to try to do this year. How was your transition from your freshman year to your sophomore year? I think I had a good transition. I had a lot of experience my freshman year, which helped gain cons- confidence for my sophomore year, so I think I had a pretty good transition. What do you feel is your biggest strength that you bring to the team? Um, I think one of my biggest strengths would be shooting the ball. My team can depend on me to make shots when we need them. So. Yeah, and we've seen those shots uh, made down the clutch in several games in the last couple of years. What do you attribute your shooting touch to? Um, I would just say confidence, getting in the gym and practicing those game-like shots really help me be confident when shooting them in the games. This might be the toughest question I ask you, but what do you think you need to work on? Um, uh, one thing I really want to work on is finishing at the rim. I can get there, but sometimes I don't finish as well as I need to. So. What are your expectations for the team this year? Um, I'm really excited about this year, but I'm expecting us to make to the tournament, so that's one of our really big goals that I hope we can accomplish. Who do you expect to be some of the toughest teams in the OVC? Uh, Belmont, they've always been a tough opponent. And uh, UT Martin, I know they have a tough preseason schedule, so they're going to be ready for conference. How did it feel uh, last year beating UT Martin on your home court? Uh, it felt good, but this year I definitely want to beat them on their home court. So, Who are your biggest influences in basketball and why? Um, I would say my parents are definitely a big influence because they introduced me to the game and they brought me to all my practices and stuff growing up. And then just the teammates I've had over the years that have given me the confidence to be the player I am today. If you could play basketball with any player, who would it be and why? Uh, I think it would just be Michael Jordan because he's someone I've always loved to watch. I didn't get to watch him when I was younger, but it would have been really cool to play with him. What is your ultimate goal in playing college basketball? Uh, my ultimate goal uh, would be really cool to score 1,000 points. I think so. Um, how are the three freshmen progressing? What would you tell them to get ready for the college game? Um, I would say just get ready for the physicality. The OPC is physical, and that's something you have to get used to. So. What are things that the team are, is working on this year that uh, you really enjoy working on? Um, I think our defense is something we've been trying to really focus in on, which is something we need to fix. So I'm excited about that for this season. And the buzz, yeah, I know you just keep adding things to that. Are you adding some more things to it? Yeah, we're adding a couple more things, so I think they're going to be really helpful. And going into this season, this season is just a couple of weeks away. How excited are you for it to happen? Um, I'm pretty excited. Every day is another day closer, which I can't wait. And uh, what would you do if you weren't playing basketball? Uh, I'd be really bored. It's a lot of my time, so I don't know what I'd be doing. Take us through a typical day for a college athlete. I know that some of the students probably don't understand the workload that you put in. Um, I'd say a typical day is uh, you typically, right now with our practice schedule, you have class, and then we have weights before practice, practice, and typically you have like an individual in there or something, study hall hours, and then plus studying and homework for those other classes. How tough is it when you go on the road and have to miss class? Um, the professors here are really understanding about it, so I wouldn't say it's as tough as maybe other schools because they're willing to let you take tests earlier or take tests once you get back from traveling, which is really helpful. I know that I I go on several trips with you every year, and it seems like the girls are always studying. Yeah, it's typically always around, like, test time when we have to leave for conference, so everyone's always studying on the bus, but we have Wi-Fi on the bus, which really helps, and then the hotel, we normally have study hall hours and stuff like that. What would you tell to the younger athletes that are thinking about taking up the game of basketball? Uh, I would say you never can put too much work into it. Like, don't think you're putting too much because it's going to be worth it in the end if you get what you want. And how did it feel when you signed your Division I offer? Uh, It was a really good feeling. It's a dream I had since I was a little kid, so it was just something I always worked towards, and to be able to accomplish it was just amazing. Was it difficult for you coming into a program where the coaches who were coaching you were not the ones that recruited you? Um, 
I would say it was difficult just because I they didn't know how I played. They never got to watch me play, but they definitely were understanding about that and then got to know me as the other coaches did. So that was good. Taylor, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Taylor Seal, junior guard for the Eastern Illinois women's basketball team. Here with Eastern Illinois junior guard Carly Pace. And Carly, you're from Clarksville, Tennessee, and you probably grew up watching Austin P play. How does it feel playing for a team not in your hometown? Um, to be honest, I don't really think about it like that. I was given the opportunity to play here at Eastern Illinois, so I am loyal to the school and I'm willing to do whatever for my team. Um, as for Austin P, um, I I love the school. I mean, obviously it is hometown. But when we step in between the lines, all that's gone. As a main point guard, what is your job in leading the team? Um, honestly, I do more of like a leadership. Like my, I have more of a leadership role with the team. Um, I am their leader, and they know that. They depend on me for energy and obviously points and getting this team um, started. Um, I just take that and really just kind of roll with it like I am only a junior but I have had experience like my freshman year towards the end I had to step up and become that leader for them and then all last year so honestly this year I think I'm going to be a great leader. You're left-handed what kind of advantages do you think that gives you? Um, well, um, it's just, I don't know. Some people just, they, whatever, they just can't guard it. They try to either jump really high and try to guard it, and then I just go right and then usually finish left. It just gives me that advantage that some people don't have. What sets you apart and what you bring to the team? Um, I just, I think my confidence sets me apart. I am very confident in my game. Um, and that just helps me with, with my shot. If I shoot it, I know it's going in and that that just increases the percentage in my shots. How can the team keep going in the progress that it made last year? Um, we're just going to take it day by day. We can't think about the end goal. We just have to go game by game, practice by practice. And what do you think are the team goals this year? Um, we definitely want to finish in the top half of the conference and we're making the tournament. And what would it mean to make the tournament in your junior year? Um, it would mean the world to me. Um, we came, I came here knowing that the team was struggling, and I came here to try to help. And obviously, I did help my my freshman and my uh, sophomore year. But this year, I'm taking that step to help not only score points but to actually bring in wins. If you could play basketball with any player, who would it be and why? Um, if I could play basketball with any player, I think it would be Shaquille O'Neal because I just love having that post player to either clean up my missed shots or just to dump it down to. What would you like to see in your final two years here at EIU? Um, I would like to see us make the tournament both two, uh, this year and next year and just for us to create a culture that will stay here even when I'm gone. What kind of teammates do you have? Um, I have the greatest teammates in the world. We get along so well, and we have just just love each other. Why do you think you get along so well? Um, just our, our chemistry is good. I, Coach B does a good job rec recruiting um, great kids that want to come and want to work and just leave all the other stuff outside of basketball. Um, we, just, we just get along so well right now, and it's going great. I heard in practice today that you've been working extra on your shot. Uh, why are you doing that? Um, yes, of course. I work every day outside of practice on my shot. Um, this is a, my junior year. I want this to be my, my best year so far, obviously. Um, and to do that, I just have to put in all the extra work I can. What do you think you can work on to be a better player? Um, definitely my three-point shot. I have a good uh, percentage, but I want it to be better. Um, and then my right hand. <laughs> Uh, defensively, what do you think you need to work on? Um, I, defensively, um, I can work on keeping the ball in front. Um, honestly, if I just focus on it a little more, I think I'm going to be good. It's just getting that mentality that my player isn't going to score. Carly Pace, thanks for joining us. Have a great day. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for having me. That was junior guard Carly Pace. And when we return, Mike Brab will have an interview with Josiah Wallace, and we'll do that in one minute. Welcome back. This is Mike Brad. We're live at the uh, Doubletree Hotel in downtown Evansville, Indiana, where the Ohio Valley Conference preseason media day is taking place. 
And uh, joining us right now is Eastern Illinois junior guard Josiah Wallace. Josiah last year averaged 15 and a half points a game. He was eighth in the OVC in scoring. First team all conference last year, just the sixth player in Eastern history to uh, be named first team all conference in the OVC in the past 25 years. Also made the all newcomer team. Josiah, congratulations. Uh, were you expecting to have any kind of success like that a year ago? Um, you know, just coming from junior college, um, not a lot of people knowing who I was. I was just really out there, excited to play, being able to play Division One basketball. Um, but once I finally started finding some success on the court, I knew I could um, translate that to the Division One. And um, once I kind of had a couple good games, it just kind of started rolling into place, and um, it was an exciting year for sure. You went to Marshall High School, then you went to, well, we'll back up just a second. Out of high school, I think you actually were planning to go to play here in Evansville, right, in Division Correct. Two at Southern Indiana. Correct. And then you changed your mind mm -hmm. and you went to Olney Central Junior College right. because that could get you to Division One basketball. Correct, correct, yep. Um, my goal was always to play Division One basketball, um, so I decommitted from Division Two Southern Indiana. Um, it's a great school, great campus, but just not what I was looking for, and um, – I'm glad I did now because I'm at AIU and I love it and uh, I'm living out my dream. Now you, um, I am told that you figured out at Olney Central that you could score. Is that is that about right or <laughs> yeah, not, not your not your version of the story? That's what uh, Coach Spoon loves to say, so I guess we can roll with that. But um, <laughs> yeah, at Olney, um, that's kind of where I found. Uh, I guess you can say I started scoring the ball better, um, but a lot of it was just being in the position to score at Olney. So. Um, there was a lot of weight on me just to score the ball, um, so they kind of just fell into place. But I could always kind of score. Um, I was always kind of a facilitator, so it's just kind of translated good um, to our offense here at EIU. And Coach Spoon did a good job putting me in spots last year, when, especially when he knew I was feeling good and feeling it. He always could run a play for me to keep it going. Um, he always had me in the right spot, so. Yeah, feeling good and feeling it. You yeah. um, you have the ability to score in bunches, in yeah. streaks. Mm -hmm. Last year against Arkansas State, 16 minutes to go in the game. You had no points. Right. You ended up with 31. Yeah. And now the game did go overtime right. to get you there. But right. have you always had that ability to just go off? Um, you know, that game was kind of different than any other game I've ever played, and that game was kind of, kind of special. I remember Chaps, I was sitting on the bench. I think I had two fouls or something. Chaps told me um, – said, you have zero points, what are you doing out there? So it kind of woke me up, and I <laughs> hit a couple shots, and after that I was just kind of in a zone that I haven't been in very many times. It's just a special zone. Um, but that was a cool game. That was a special game. We won in overtime against a very good Arkansas State team. They were big, strong, and fast. Um, but, yeah, that game that game was something special. That was a cool game. What kind of goals do you have for this year? Um, I'd say my main goal this year is definitely win conference. I want to, I want to be able to dance in March. I want to go to March Madness. I think that's our – goal as a team um we definitely have the pieces to do it this year we brought in a lot of guys that can help us and um that will add on to what we brought back from last year we have five starters coming back um a lot of experience like you said earlier um we're all, probably one of the oldest teams in the country juniors and seniors no freshmen or sophomores so um hopefully hopefully that count helps us um in the late season last year we kind of fell apart in the late season so hopefully this year we can stay focused and with experience we will we will um, be able to win those close games that we lost last year. First two games are against Texas Tech, national runner-up last mm -hmm. year, and Wisconsin, Yep, really good, on the road. Right. Do you like playing in big time in places like that? Yeah, you know, that's kind of something you always dream about um, as a kid, being able to play in a place like Texas Tech, especially after they just were the national championship runner-up. That's kind of – it's going to be a crazy game, I'm sure. It's going to be a crazy atmosphere, one of the best atmospheres you could play in. But um, – both those games are definitely going to be tough, so we need to be ready to come out and play. Um, for the new guys, I remember last year when my first game we played at Texas, and it's kind of like a culture shock here out there. Your heart's pumping fast. Um, you kind of got to calm yourself down. So we've talked to our new guys about that a little bit. Just let the game come to you, especially in the first couple minutes. Not get too excited, too rushed. Try not to do anything that you don't do in practice or anything. But um, there's going to be some mistakes. There's going to be some bad plays just because everyone's so happy to finally be playing you're going to be pumped up hard's going to be pumping fast so but it's going to be a, it's going to be a great experience for sure uh, you're a junior construction management major Correct. tell us about your long-term goals do you want to play professionally which you know could be in europe or something right. like that yeah definitely if it's in the right place overseas um definitely depending on money stuff like that um i would look at that but definitely after basketball's over um start working for a construction company be a project manager project manager or superintendent or something along that lines um, but right now I'm just kind of been focused on 
this year and um, what we're going to be able to do this year as a team. I'm really excited. So, All right. Hey, thanks for doing this. Congratulations on being preseason all-conference, and we'll look forward to the um, exhibition game next week on Wednesday Appreciate night. Okay? Thank you. That's Josiah Wallace, Eastern Illinois junior guard. Also, a little bit earlier before we left Charleston, we talked with Eastern's other double-figure score returning from a year ago. That's junior guard Mac Smith. Mac, you're a junior, but uh, you are the most experienced person on this team, so I guess does that make you kind of like a maybe a honorary senior or something? Um, no, I just had a lot of my first year. I just had a lot of people that gave me a lot of good knowledge of the game and helped me with the experience and what to expect my uh, rest of my years here before they left. As I recall, that fall you came in as a freshman and you played a little bit in the first few games, and then one of the early season games you had ten points in the first six minutes of the game, and then bad stuff happened. You got hurt, right? Yeah, my shoulder had popped out for the, I want to say, the sixth time of my life. And it was just, it, I mean, it was just a, a minor step back for a major comeback. And once my shoulder got back, and I just knew that it was time for me to just keep rolling and act like nothing happened. You missed a month, but then you came back right after Christmas, and you ended up starting 20 games that year, averaged 12 points a game, made the uh, all-newcomer team in the OVC. Did you have those kind of goals in your mind at the start of the year, or did you surpass what you thought you could do? Um, those goals were not in the back of my head. They were not even planned. I was just focused on helping the team win and helping their, and uplifting everybody because we had a, a kind of rough season. Everyone was getting injured. Everyone was getting hurt. Our body was wearing down. So for me as a freshman to have those achievements is a blessing. It's, it's just amazing that I was the one that could help, especially after the big injury and the long as I took as a long as I took to recover and stuff like that. So it felt kind of good. Did that you think kind of affect your recruiting as you came out of high school? People had some questions about that. No, no, not really. I, I always been an underdog. Always been over uh, overlooked. But I mean, that's why I play now with a chip on my shoulder. You know, so I felt like a couple of the people that that they ranked me over, I always felt like I was better than them. So, I mean, to those guys that were, you know, I felt that were over me, they, they're they also doing big things, you know. I don't never talk down on nobody, but it's always a blessing to be where I am now. We're talking with Eastern Illinois guard Mac Smith, and you couldn't have been too big of an underdog out of high school, Mac, because you were an Indiana All-Star. Tell, First of all, explain for people from Illinois what an Indiana All-Star is and what that means. An Indiana All-Star means a lot. I mean, it means that you are one of the top top players out of the whole entire state of Indiana and all high schools. And honestly, that wasn't a big accomplishment of mine. That wasn't a plan. That wasn't a goal. It just happened. I put in the work, and I, and it paid off. Now, you're a three-point shooter, and we have a new three-point line that's about a foot farther from the basket this year. Is that going to make a difference? Honestly, I don't really see the line when I'm shooting. I just know that it's in the rhythm of the game. Once you're in rhythm and once the balls feel good in your hand or it's a good play inside out or just a good ball movement, I mean, it's just I just make sure I have to knock down that shot because that's why coach has me in the game, to knock down shots and make the right plays. And you've been knocking them down. You've got to go into the year with a streak where you've made a three-point shot 49 games in a row. That's the longest streak in the country. Does that weigh on your mind? Are you thinking about that as the game gets going? No. I just go out there and play the game. I mean, I'm, I'm happy that I got the record. I mean, I'm pretty sure a lot of people don't know who I am. I'm pretty sure a lot of people don't even know I have that record. But, I mean, it's like everything goes. A lot of people have been overlooking me. So I just go out there. If, if I make a three, I make a three. I mean, that's why I'm in the game. That's why, you know, I spend a lot of time in the gym working on my shot. But honestly, I don't think the line is going to affect anything. And if it does, then I will readjust. Okay, going into this year, you got a really veteran team. All juniors and seniors on this team, I assume people are pretty optimistic. A lot of starters back from last year. Yes, we are very, very happy that the season is right around the corner. And we've been working hard each and every day, you know. Uh, learning new things, picking it up very quick, going after each other, and just having fun with the process of uh, the season coming. And us being juniors and seniors, that means it's a lot of experience from different places and a lot of experience just growing up and learning different things. And all of us coming together, it's going to be amazing. 
All right. We'll look forward to it, Matt. Good luck, and uh, thanks for doing this. Appreciate it. Thank you. That's Eastern Illinois junior guard Max Smith, um, headed ready for his junior season after averaging in double figures his first two seasons at EIU. We're going to send it back to Charleston. Rob and Dylan and Kobe are there to kind of take a look ahead at the uh, schedule, I think, for both the EIU men's and women's teams. Go ahead, guys. All right, thank you, Mike. And we'll go ahead and take a look at the men's schedule first. And right off the bat, they are going to have a big-time game. Yeah, huge game against uh, national champion runner-up, uh, in Texas Tech, they had the Jarrett Culver kid who got drafted last year. I think he got picked fifth. But, again, huge game for them. And then they turn around and have to go to Wisconsin, who was also an NCAA tournament team last year who lost to Oregon. So two really, really big games right off the bat for Eastern. Yeah, following that, they go they host Chicago State. That will be their first home game of the year. Then they will be hosting Indiana Northwest, and they'll be at a tournament uh, in Texas. Um, and then – you know, conference plays a while away. They have a lot of games. Purdue, Fort Wayne, Green Bay, Milwaukee, Western Illinois, Grand Canyon. And then January 2nd is when the conference uh, schedule starts. And you look at this, too. They're going to play a lot of games away from Lance Arena. In fact, they have a home game on December 7th against Green Bay. Then don't play at home again until they play Jacksonville State on January 16th. They'll have three non-conference games on the road, started by four non-conference games – or more conference games on the road. So, you know, it could really affect the team one way or another how they open up OVC play. Yeah, definitely, for sure. That And it's, the thing you brought that up is that I literally was looking, you know, as we were going down here, and I noticed, I was like, wow, seven away games. That's that's a pretty tough road trip for sure. Yeah, and uh, Rob, I'm glad you mentioned that, you know, being away for so long affects how you play against conference teams. Last year, they opened conference at home. They started their conference schedule five and two last year, and then over the next seven games, they went two and seven, and then to round out the season, they lost five straight games. So I mean, you know, being on the road, you know, to start the OVC schedule, it could have an effect where maybe they start zero and four, or maybe they go four and zero on the road. Who knows? Now you look at the women; they'll start with their first three games at home in the confines of Lance Arena. Yeah, that definitely helps. I was, I saw that too, and I was like, that might be. I don't want to say they're going to be easy wins, but that's three winnable games right there for uh, the Lady Panthers and, you know, just being at home. Yeah, I remember last year I think they started at home as well against some lower competition, I guess we could say, and uh, they got some wins out of it. So if they can do it again this year, it's a good start to the season. I mean, they have a big uh, game at Wisconsin on November 26th. Omaha is coming in here, and they're always a pretty good team. Then they're going to play in that Illinois Compass tournament again. Will they take on – Northern Illinois at DeKalb and then play either SIU or uh, Western Illinois as well. And then they have the same situation as the men do in the way they open their conference. Yeah, I mean, like I said with the men's team, you know, it's all about, you know, momentum. If you can get some wins rolling, then it helps you going forward. You know, four road games, Tennessee State, Belmont, Eastern Kentucky, and Moorhead State. And Belmont is picked to finish first, so that's a tough road game right off the bat. Yeah, really. That is a really, really tough uh, road game for sure for um, Eastern. We'll send it back to Mike Brab one last time down in Evansville. Okay, guys, thanks a lot. Uh, before we ramp things up from here at the OVC preseason media day in Evansville, maybe it'd be good to just take a quick look at what's new in college basketball in the Ohio Valley Conference. On the women's side, really just one major rule change, and I'm not even sure how major this one is, but uh, they've changed their rule on a kicking violation or a defensive foul. Instead of resetting the shot clock to 30 seconds, as has happened in the past, it'll be reset to 20 this year. That's uh, in line with what the men's game has been like the last few years. Just one new coach this year in OVC women's basketball, Samantha Williams, a former assistant at Louisville, is now the head coach at Eastern Kentucky. On the men's side, three new coaches, and the uh, the big ones at Belmont, the preseason favorite in the league, Rick Bird, the longtime coach there, legend in the game, retired, and Casey Alexander, who played at Belmont, but uh, was the head coach at Lipscomb in Nashville across town. He's been hired as the head coach, so he's got lots of experience, but he's following a legend there. Brian Baroni is the new head coach at SIU Edwardsville, and former Kentucky player John Pelfrey is the new head coach at Tennessee Tech. Some more rule changes on the men's side. The big one is the three-point line. It's been moved back anywhere from about 7 to 12 inches, depending upon what uh, where you're at on the court. 
So that will be interesting to see what effect that has a little bit further out. It's not out to the NBA line, but it's closer to it. And uh, another one that will be, I think, somewhat noticeable in the men's game is after a team gets an offensive rebound, instead of resetting the shot clock to 35, it'll go back to just 20 seconds, which means they'll uh, have to get back into offense and get a shot up quicker than they're used to in the past. And, of course, uh, as things go, more opportunities and expansion of instant replay in the men's game and what they can look at on that. Well, that's going to wrap things up from here in Evansville. We're going to send it back to the guys in Charleston to wrap up our show, but glad you were with us. Again, Eastern Illinois um, basketball opens up next week, a Wednesday night uh, preseason game for the men's team, Friday night next week for the women's game. Uh, women's team. They both start regular season play on the uh, 5th of November a Tuesday night. This is Mike Brad live from Evansville. We thank you very much for joining us here. We'll send it back to Rob and Dylan the Kobe to uh, kind of recap and wrap things up. Thank you, Mike, and we appreciate all your hard work down there in Evansville and look forward to basketball starting up here on HitMix Radio. And to sum this up a little bit, of course, Belmont on both sides uh, being the preseason favorite in both the men's and women's side. And uh, Belmont has been a pretty good basketball program for several years now. Yeah, I think uh, on the men's side uh, specifically, they have Grayson Murphy and Nick Buzinski who are coming off of you know a great season last year. Not only a great season, but they also got a win in the NCAA tournament in March Madness. So two freshmen have you know already senior experience, so to speak, with that kind of level of competition. So, uh, and Terry Taylor was the OVC, uh, preseason OVC player of the year for the men's side. But, I mean, Nick Muzinski could easily just as well win that award this season. And you look at it, Josiah Wallace, the OVC pick for preseason for Eastern Illinois, someone you know well. Yeah, very well. I uh, was fortunate enough to actually play high school basketball with Josiah. He's a really great friend of mine. Um, but he, he's, you know, you know, playing with him in high school and, watch, you know, seeing him develop, he's really become a really great basketball player. I even caught some of his junior college games. Um, he's really, really improved. And, I mean, I, as, as his friend, I hope I don't put too much pressure on him, but I do kind of expect a big year from Josiah this year. Carly Pace, Dane to the preseason All-OVC of women's basketball. The men picked to finish seventh in the OVC, the women tenth. For Dylan Chorfighty and... For Kobe Brandon, Mike Brad, I'm Rob Calhoun saying so long. Thanks for joining us and have a great day. That was the OVC Basketball Media Day show on HitMix 88.9 WEIU. Be sure to join us for our first game as the men take on Tennessee Tech on the road on Tuesday, November 5th at 7. Complete broadcast schedule at WEIU.net.